Senator from Michigan. Thank you. First, let me just say amen to my uh, friend and colleague from Arizona. I, I would ask first unanimous consent that following my remarks, Senator Schmidt be permitted to speak for five minutes and Senator Cardin be permitted to speak for five minutes prior to the scheduled votes. With, without objection. Thank you so much. Mr. President, as our dear colleague, Senator Dianne Feinstein, is lying in state in San Francisco today, the home where her leadership started for us and for the country, and as we prepare to remember her tomorrow in a special celebration of her life, I rise to pay tribute. Tribute to an incredible leader and my dear friend who dedicated her life to serving the people of California and the nation. Perhaps leader isn't strong enough. It's not a strong enough word. She wasn't just a leader. She was an American icon. She inspired generations of women to stand up and suit up and push our way into the halls of power that weren't particularly welcoming. Like so many of us, she started in local government. Unlike many of us, her rise was sparked by tragedy. As president of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors, it was her job to announce the horrific assassination of Mayor George Masconi and Supervisor Harvey Milk. She was heartbroken. But she was also calm, she was determined, and she vowed that her grieving city would recover and rebuild. And she was a crucial part of that rebuilding, serving as mayor for nine years. In 1990, she ran for governor and lost, and she picked herself back up and said she wasn't done serving her state. And in 1992, she ran for the Senate and won joining five other groundbreaking women who changed the face of this institution forever. Keep in mind that before 1992, there were no women's restrooms, Mr. President, anywhere near the Senate chamber. This is actually a, a something we all noticed. Through sheer determination and a lot of hard work, she rose to become the highest ranking Democrat on the Senate Judiciary Committee and chairwoman of the Senate Intelligence Committee. Through her leadership, she left her mark on this institution over and over again in so many ways. She was a fierce and courageous advocate for common sense gun laws as our presiding officer is as well. Including the 1994 assault weapons ban signed into law by President Clinton. That legislation alone saved as so many lives from gun violence during the 10 years that it was law. And I so wish that it had been able to be continued permanently. And she stood up for American values when she led the years-long investigation into allegations that the CIA had used torture against terrorism suspects. Despite CIA and White House objections, Senator Feinstein courageously chose to publicly release what is known as the torture report. It was such an historic moment that it was even turned into a major motion picture starring Adam Driver and Annette Bening as Senator Feinstein. I'll never forget sitting in this chamber behind Senator Feinstein, to show support for her courage that day. She spoke to the American people about the horrific details outlined in this report. Senator John McCain, who understood the horrors of torture more than anyone, commended Senator Feinstein and her staff for the report and added this, our enemies act without conscience. We must not. This executive summary of the committee's report makes clear that acting without conscience isn't necessary. It's not even helpful in winning this strange and long war we're fighting. 
we should be grateful to have that truth affirmed. In response to the report, Senator Feinstein and Senator McCain's anti-torture amendment was included in the 2016 National Defense Authorization Act. The amendment restricted interrogation techniques to those authorized in the Army Field Manual and required that the International Committee of the Red Cross have access to detainees in U.S. government custody, a law that stands today. Senator Feinstein was also a tireless champion for women, including the Violence Against Women Act, legislation to fight human trafficking, and our freedom to make our own reproductive health decisions. She was a leading voice for decades on behalf of our LGBTQ plus friends and neighbors. And she fought to protect California's forests and water infrastructure. Beyond her many, many accomplishments, she was also my friend, and I so enjoyed hearing the stories from colleagues in the last number of days about her. Yes, Mr. President, I too have a seersucker suit that she bought for each of us to make sure that the women of the Senate could participate in seersucker suit day. Yes, I also have a piece of art. In addition to watercolors, she drew beautiful pictures with colored pencils, and I'm so honored to have one of those hanging in my house. Yes, Diane was also used to saying, are you staying in DC this weekend? Why don't you come over for dinner? And I was grateful for the times I was able to join her. Diane was always giving people, particularly our, all of us as women, items of hers that we admired. We had to be careful what we were admiring or we would end up getting one. One day I got the opportunity to return the favor, Mr. President, in a very small way. We were on the floor and Diane said to me, I love your lipstick, the color of your lipstick. Where did you get it? And I thought, aha, this is a moment for me to give Diane something as small as it was. So I came in a couple of days later with a package with several of the lipsticks she had admired. And the smile on her face was priceless. And she said, you don't have to do that. And I said, yes, I do. You do so much for us every day. This is just a small token I can give in return. Senator Feinstein once said this, women have begun to see that if I go through the doorway, I will take everybody through it. Today I'm remembering my friend for all the barriers she broke, the glass ceilings she shattered, the doors she held open so that so many others could follow. May her memory be a blessing to her family people of California, and all of us who are feeling her loss. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor.